In this quick video, I wanted to walk through actually a hands-on with containers on Windows Server 2016. And when we think hands-on with containers, it also means hands-on with Docker. Because I think really for the first time, a feature of Windows Server actually requires a third-party component to be installed as well to actually function. So the first step is to install containers and Docker. And the good news is we can do this very simply with a couple of lines of PowerShell. So the first command we run is this install module named Docker MSFT provider from the PS Gallery repository. Once that's done, we run an install package named Docker from that provider we just installed. Then we restart the computer. Now by performing that installation, what it also does is add in, if I scroll down to the roles and features, the actual containers feature as well. So the containers feature of Windows Server provides the runtime environment, the isolation for the containerized applications. And then Docker is providing the management interface, the management libraries, etc., and access to things like the Docker repository. Now, once you've rebooted, if ever you wanted to update the Docker installation, you would run this command. So this will actually go and check, hey, is there a newer version of Docker? And pull it down and install it if there is. Once that's done, what it actually did behind the scenes is I want networking. Now, networking for containers is beyond the scope of this particular video. But what it did is it set up by default NAT, Network Address Translation. If I go and look at my Hyper-V Manager, I can see if I look at my virtual switch manager, it automatically created a NAT of type internal. So the name of it is just NAT and it's set to internal. Internal means only the host itself and any VMs running on it can connect and communicate via this switch. So containers actually use the Hyper-V switch for their networking. Then we also use the NAT, NAT component in Windows Server which provides the network address translation. And really all this means, if I actually go and have a look, if I look at the networks that it installed for me, there is that net NAT and it's using the NAT driver. If I inspect it, by default what it has done is set up an address space so the container instances can go and get an IP configuration from this kind of range and it will actually use the IP address of the container host. So I don't have to do anything. This is actually a pretty good configuration to use in a test dev environment. I don't want to use transparent where they actually get an IP address directly from DHCP or something else because containers might get created very, very quickly and then deleted very, very quickly. Create, delete, create, delete. There'll be a huge amount of traffic on the routers in the environment. I don't want that. So by using the NAT, there's no actual network communications or router updates as part of their creation. I'm just using the IP address of my container host. Now the first thing you're likely going to want to do is pull down an image. So I can do docker images. So I'm running this command. Now I'm running this in the PowerShell integrated scripting environment just because it's an easy way for me to show the commands. But these are not PowerShell commands. This is just the docker command line interface. I could as easily run these in a regular command line interface. So I can run docker images. These will show me all the ones I have installed. And what you see I've got, I downloaded the nano server image. I downloaded Windows Server Core. And I downloaded an image with IIS, which actually builds on top of the server core image. Its size is not really 9.48. It's a layer that includes the OS layer as well. So that size represents the IIS layer and the layers is dependent upon its parent, which is Windows Server Core, which is why you see that size. So I probably want to pull down a couple of images. Typically, I pull down Windows Server Core and Nano Server. I could search. Well, I'll say, well, what images are available for IIS? So I can do Docker search IIS. If I run that, it will go out to the internet-based repository. I can create my own on-premises one if I want. But for right now, I'm just using the regular Docker. And I can see, yep, there's a Microsoft IIS out there. There's a nano server IIS out there instead of being built on server core, it's built on nano server. There's ones with PHP, there's all these different ones out there. So I could pull down 
I'll take the one based on the server core, the Microsoft IIS. So I pull those down. Now if I just want to quickly create a container, just to kind of look around, what I do here is I do a Docker run. I'm not creating a custom image. Instead, all I'm doing is actually creating a new instance that's interactive with the dash IT. I'm going to launch command.exe, that's the process that this container is running, and I'm going to base it on server core. So if I paste this in, let's try that again. There we go. So push enter, and what it's doing is creating a container instance, and here I am. There's a command prompt, because that's the container I created. If I now go and look at all the containers I have running, if I do a docker, ps dash a, there's my container instance. I can see I'm basing on this image and it's running command.exe and it's currently up. It was created 14 seconds ago. It's been status of up for 13 seconds. Now anything I do in here is within this instance. If I exit, what's happened? If I go with docker ps dash a, well it's exited. Why did it exit? Just because I exited command. Containers are not like regular services. Their job is to perform an action. Once that action is complete, the container stops. So I created a container and I said its job was to run cmd.exe. When I typed exit, I closed cmd.exe, i.e. that container had fulfilled its function and so it stopped. That was its job. So you, you have to treat containers differently from regular services or environments. They're there to run a job. When that job is finished, they will exit. Now what I want to do now is I want to create my own custom image. Now I'm going to build this on top of the IIS image, but I'm just going to change a few files. Now to do this, what I'm going to have, if I look, I created an IIS demo folder. I have a website. This is the website I want to put into that image. And I created a Docker file. This has no file type extension. It's just Docker file. And you can see I'm saying I want to create a new image from I, my parent, Microsoft slash IIS. I want to run this command inside the container instance, i.e. I'm deleting the default IIS start HTML page. Now, I'm not actually deleting the file from that Microsoft IIS image. It's read-only because it's the parent of this new image I'm creating. Containers are really a series of virtual layers, virtual registry, virtual file system, virtual services. And when I create my new container instance, I get my own set of virtual layers. So what I'm doing is when I delete a file, it's marking in my virtual file system layer for my new custom image, which is the only one that is writable. And I'm saying, hey, I want you to hide this file. I want you to pretend this does not exist anymore. So even though the file still exists in the parent virtual file system layer that I look at, I can't see it anymore. It's as if it has been deleted, but I've not altered in any way that parent image. So I'm sending it to delete it. And then I'm saying copy the content of this local folder, which you can see here, into this folder in the container, i.e. the IIS site. So I'm going to use that. So what I'm saying is docker build. I'm going to give my new image a name called bad father. You'll see why in a second. And I want to build my current location, dot. So I'm going to run that command. it's going through, it's running the various actions, and it's finished. So now if I run Docker images, I have the regular images and I have my bad father image. And you see the size because it's based on the size of all of the images above it. The parent, which is IIS, and its parent is Windows Server Core. I can now run it. So I'm doing a Docker run. I give it a name. This is the container instance name. So I'm going to call it IIS demo. I'm going to make it interactive so I can run CMD. And I'm doing a port mapping, 8080. So I'm mapping port 80 of my container host IP address to port 80 of the container, which means I'll be able to access port 80 of the container host 
but it will actually redirect it to port 80 of the container. So that's how I can offer things beyond just the local container. I'm using the bad father image, and I'm going to run cmd.exe. So I'll copy that, and I'll actually trigger this from here. One of the things to be aware of, when you try and run interactively, if you try and do it from the integrated scripting environment, it does not work properly. You don't get the interactivity. So for these commands, I run this from a regular CLI. So I'm running. You can see it's starting it. And then once that's completed, that container instance is up and running. I would be able to interact. So if I go over here and let's run... I can see, hey, there's bad father. It's up for 16 seconds. So it's now just sitting there, it's doing that job. So how can I prove that it's really running? So my container host is savdal container. So I jump over to another box and go Savdal container. There's the website. And this is why I'm a bad father, because my demo is my poor son, the first time we ever went on Rock and Roll Roller Coaster. And just to prove I'm a bad father, if I click it again, there's another picture, uh, the first time we went on Splash Mountain, and there's a close-up. If I was to stop the container, so we jump over here, And it's now going to terminate that process. And I could even jump over to here. And look at my processes. So it's now exited. But it still exists. But right now, because it's exited, if I do a refresh, it's looking, looking, but it's going to fail. Because that container instance no longer exists. And that is what is actually offering this website. So now it's stopped and it's done. I could clean it up so the container still exists. So what I could do is I could take its container ID and now I might say okay well I'm going to save it into a variable just to save me keep typing it. So I could start it, I could attach to it, I could stop it, I can remove it. So now if I do a docker ps which is listing the processes, it's gone. Notice I still have my other one, because I never actually deleted it. So I could actually go ahead and delete the one I spun up just to be interactive for the command prompt. And I could remove that one as well. Now they've all gone. I still have my image though, and I could delete that as well. I could do docker rmi to remove image, bad father, And I'm back to where I started. That's really it. That's just a, a quick run around containers if you wanted to get going with them and try it out for yourself. Again, super simple. This is a very basic example. My Docker file, I'll just put it up once more just so you can see it there. The image I want to base this from. I'm deleting the default start page, so it will use the one I'm going to copy in. And then just copying in the content of a local folder I created into its INET pub www root. And then I'm good to go. Hope that was useful. Thanks very much.